Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. We're talking about the signs and symptoms of testicular cancer in this lesson. Before we talk about those signs and symptoms, let's talk about what testicular cancer is. So testicular cancer is going to be a cancer of the testicles, and the testicles are going to be two male reproductive organs located within the scrotum. If we look at this image here, here is the scrotum, and inside the scrotum is going to be the testicles. And testicles can also be referred to as testes, if plural, and if singular, if there's one, it's known as a testis. Now, the testes or testicles are going to be responsible for producing hormones like androgens, so such things like testosterone, and they're also responsible for producing sperm as well. Now, there are multiple risk factors for getting testicular cancer. Some of these include having an undescended testis or undescended testicle, which would be the condition known as cryptorchidism. So in some male infants, they may not have had both of their testicles descend, they may have one still in the abdominal cavity, and if that testicle is still remains in the abdominal cavity, it's at an increased risk for having testicular cancer. Having a family history of testicular cancer is also another risk factor. If the patients had a previous testicular cancer of one of their testicles, the other testicles also add an increased risk for having cancer as well. Having past infections with human papillomavirus, Epstein-Barr virus, and cytomegalovirus have all been shown to potentially increase the risk of having testicular cancer. Ethnicity is also another risk factor, so males of European descent are at the highest risk for having testicular cancer. And there was some question whether or not past testicular trauma was a risk factor, but the evidence for this is not strong. Now, testicular cancer is going to be the most common cancer in males between the ages of 15 to 45, and the average age of diagnosis is 33. And the incidence of testicular cancer has been increasing over the past several decades for unknown reasons, and it's more common in industrialized nations compared to developing nations. Now, let's talk about the signs and symptoms of testicular cancer. So, one of the most important findings in testicular cancer is going to be a nodule. So a testicular nodule can be found. It's going to be unilateral, meaning that it's only going to be found on one testicle most often, and it's going to be firm. If you were to touch, it's going to be a firm nodule. It's not going to be separable from the testicle. This is going to be important. It's going to be attached to the testicle, and it's often going to be found on exam by the patient themselves. So the patient will often find this incidentally on self-examination, and this is going to be the most common initial finding. Now, again, it's important to note that although I mentioned that it's unilateral, 0.6% of cases will have a nodule on the other testicle as well. So it's important to check both. Another potential finding in testicular cancer is swelling. So it's going to be testicular swelling. So again, it's going to be unilateral on one testicle. And the swelling is going to be painless. But we may see pain in some cases as well. So testicular pain can occur in certain patients. And there may be some numbness of the affected testicle. Dull pain may occur in around a third of patients, and acute pain, so more severe acute pain, may occur in roughly 10% of patients. Abdominal discomfort can also be found in testicular cancer as well. It's going to be in the lower abdominal area, so lower abdominal discomfort. It's going to be described as a dull ache or a heavy sensation. We can also see gynecomastia occurring in some patients. So gynecomastia is going to be male breast enlargement. This is going to be due to particular types of testicular cancer, including testicular germ cell tumors. Because these particular testicular cancers produce a hormone known as human chorionic gonadotropin, or HCG, this is going to be the hormone that's produced during pregnancy, and this is going to occur in roughly 5% of germ cell tumors. Another potential finding we can see in testicular cancer is hyperthyroidism. So this is going to be high levels of thyroid hormones. This may occur in rare cases with testicular germ cell tumors again. This is going to be more specifically due to very high levels of HCG. And the reason that this can occur is because HCG has a similar structure to thyroid stimulating hormone. So HCG can act on the thyroid to induce the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones. And this can lead to signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism, like heat intolerance, weight loss, increased appetite, increased bowel movement, frequency, tremors, and many others. If you want more information, please check my lesson on the signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Now, if left untreated, testicular cancer can metastasize to many different parts of the body. Some of these include the following, the lymph nodes, the lungs, the abdominal area or cavity, the spine and central nervous system, and the vascular areas as well. And we'll talk about some of these findings in the next upcoming slides. So some general signs and symptoms that we can see in metastatic testicular cancer include the following. 
anorexia. So anorexia is a term we use for reduced or loss of appetite. We can also see weight loss occurring. So it's going to be unintended weight loss. The patient's not trying to lose weight, but they're losing weight generally over the course of months. And this can be also related to loss of appetite, but can also be related to other effects of the cancer as well. And malaise can also be something we can see in testicular cancer. So malaise is going to be feeling generally unwell. They feel sick and unwell. And they may also have fatigue and low energy levels as well. Now, if there is lymph node involvement, it's often going to be manifested in the neck. There'll be a neck mass. So it's going to be due to metastasis to supraclavicular lymph nodes or cervical lymph nodes. So if we look in this image here, the supraclavicular lymph nodes are going to be above the clavicle. So in this area here, and the cervical or cervical lymph nodes will be in the neck area. So we can see a lymph node like this. This is what we would call Virchow's node. This is something we can see in many different abdominal cancers and also in testicular cancer if it has metastasized to the supraclavicular lymph node. And specifically with regards to Virchow's node, it's going to be the left supraclavicular lymph node. And we can also see a cervical lymph node that appears something like this. So these types of neck masses can occur in testicular cancer. Now, if there is lung involvement, we may see the following dyspnea or shortness of breath, cough, cough may be dry cough, so they're not coughing anything up, or it may be productive. They may cough up a bit of sputum or mucus. They may also have hemoptysis, which is coughing up blood. And they may also have chest pain, which can be either discomfort or tightness or actually a pain. And all of these are going to be related to metastases of the testicular cancer into the lungs and the chest area. We can also see abdominal involvement as well. These include nausea and vomiting symptoms. So nausea and vomiting may occur if there's metastases to the abdominal cavity. And we can also see back pain occurring as well, especially if there's retroperitoneal invasion. So retroperitoneal is going to be behind the peritoneum. So it's going to be near the posterior area of the abdominal cavity. It's mostly going to be a bulky mass that's going to cause back pain. So a bulky mass pressing on surrounding structures that's often going to cause back pain. And then we can have other involvement as well. And these other involvements include leg swelling. So it's going to be what we would call lower extremity edema. And this can be due to vascular obstruction, the tumors obstructing the vascular flow or supply. So perhaps venous drainage is not adequate and there's a blockage of venous drainage. This can lead to a swelling in the legs or it can be thrombosis, a clot, and that would also prevent venous drainage. And we can also see neurological symptoms in some cases as well. So some of these neurological findings can be from metastases to the central nervous system, so the spine or the brain. This can lead to many different findings, including blurred vision or headaches or many others. And we may also see something else that's not due to metastases, but it affects the central nervous system, and that is known as testicular cancer-associated perineoplastic encephalitis. So this is going to be a perineoplastic syndrome from testicular cancer. So it's going to be due to the cancer affecting how the immune system functions. It's going to cause the immune system to attack the brain. That is what will happen. And encephalitis is going to be an inflammation of the brain. This can lead to a loss of limb movement, eye movement, and speech in very severe cases. Please check out my full lesson on testicular cancer if you want more information on how it's diagnosed and treated. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.